Okay, we're going to go ahead and talk about our route schedule today. If you're a company and you guys have routes that you service on a consistent basis, for example, every week you show up at the same location, every month, every two weeks, every six months, doesn't matter. If you have a consistent schedule, that's what our route schedule is for. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this. The first thing is you're going to have to sign into the software. If you've just purchased the software, when you first open it, you're going to be asked for a username and password. The username is going to be the word admin, and the password is going to be exactly the same. Admin, lowercase letters, all one word. Once you're signed in, you're going to be brought to the task list screen. It's a default setting. We need to get to our route schedule. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to this button here. It says route schedule. We're going to click on it. If you get this pop-up, you can just hit no. I just happen to have something turned on in the control table where you can make your routes to tasks. Once you get on the route schedule, you're going to notice that it doesn't have anything set up at all. It doesn't look like there's much going on here. So we have to first make sure we have the right frequencies. So a little bit of setup is what we have to do right now. First thing is where it says frequency, if you click in this bottom box right here, double click, it'll drill you into the frequency setup area. Out of the box, our software is going to come with a couple default settings. First one is bi-weekly, basically every two weeks, and that runs every 14 days. So every 14 days, that route will show up. The other ones are monthly, which we consider monthly a 28-day cycle. Most people will in any business. Um, however, you may not, and that's perfectly fine. If you want to do 30 days, just type in 30 here. And our next frequency by default is weekly, which a lot of people also use. And that's set to re basically reoccur every seven days. Now, let's say these don't work for you and you need some more frequencies. You need, maybe you need a six month. We can click on the bottom line right here. It's like this in most areas of the software, including the route schedule. You click the bottom line to get your new row going. So I'm going to name this one six month. And we're going to say that's about, I don't know, every 180 days. And then maybe I want to do a one-time stop. Maybe I need to stop for customers to call me, and I want to put them on the route schedule, but I only want them serviced one time, and after that I want it to fall off the route schedule. No problem. We can go ahead and name it one time. Give it a length of days of zero, because you do not want it to reoccur. And then we can tell it, we can do two things. We can have it stay on the route schedule and not reoccur, and then you'd have to manually remove it. or we can check off delete after posting. So any route that is given this frequency of one time, when you move the route schedule forward to the next scheduled routes, it's going to go ahead and drop whatever set to one time. We also have some additional options here. I'm going to go ahead and make a frequency called first Monday. Maybe I don't need it to occur every seven days or every six days or whatever. Maybe I actually need to show up at this customer's location on the first Monday of every month. We can select off every month, or maybe it's every other month. We can go ahead and check off every other month, and we can just continue down the line. Once we've built our frequencies, we want to click Close. This is going to act as a Close and Save button at the same time. The next thing we want to do is make sure we have our route text set up. So what we're going to do here is double click in this blank area to get them started. By default, our system will list two route techs right off the bat. R1 stands for Route 1, R2 stands for Route 2. If you don't like those, that's not a problem. You can either click in there and rename them. Maybe your Route 1 guy is Joe and you don't go by a route name. And maybe you're a smaller company and, you, and it's easier for you guys just to go ahead. And if you get this pop-up, would you like to update all routes? You would say yes, because if you rename this route in the future, it basically is asking, do you want me to update everybody to the new route? And maybe Route 2 is going to be Mark instead. And we tab out, same thing, yes, update all the routes for the new name. Additionally, if you did decide to go by R1 or Route 1, you could type it in here on the new line. And you could also give a name next to it. Maybe you want to do it this way. Maybe Mark is Route 1 instead. This is going to be the username they sign in with on the mobile device to see their routes. It'll also be the name 
that is assigned to any printouts that you put on there. So remember, if you, if you really want to use the usernames, maybe you want to use Joe as the uh, actual person, then make sure you name that route Joe. If not, do R1, R2, or Route 1, Route 2, Route 3. Um, you can enter a lot of other information here. This is all pretty self-explanatory, but if you have any questions on that, feel free to contact the training department. We'll follow up. Um, once you have what you want, you go ahead and click that close button. And because we're adding pretty deep changes to this route schedule, I would recommend closing it and then reopen by clicking route schedule again. We now have all of those different frequencies and our different technicians listed here to choose as we build our route. So now we're going to build a route. I'm just going to do a couple route stops here and give you the idea how this works. Let's say I need to show up every week at one of my customer's locations. This works like a book, left to right. You have to go in order. You've got to check things off as you go. First thing I'm going to do is select a frequency. I want to show up every seven days at this customer's location. And I'm going to assign this work to Joe. Joe's going to be doing this route. The next thing here is the route date. Let's say the date is today, 321.17. When I tab out here, I'm now saying, OK, let's give this a weekly frequency. We're going to make Joe the route driver. And we're going to show up. The first day we're going to show up is 321. We can give these a stop number if we want to order our stops per day. Maybe on 321, we have 30 stops, and we want to list them 1 through 30 because we know the best route. There's also tools in the future in other videos that will show you how to map routes and basically get the best route for your routes. So the last thing we've got to do here is select a customer. I'm going to go ahead and select one of my customers. And you'll notice that it already came in with some information that I had pre-populated earlier. However, you can change this information. Let's say that um, when you go on site, you know that when you go to the Brazil food market, they want you to go, uh, go to the back gate. You can put that in there. That will show up on any tickets that are printed, and it will show up on the mobile devices for your technicians to see as they start to work this. These are the only things you need to enter. You do not need a checklist, but these are tools that you can use in the future. You do not need any of this other stuff. These are things you're going to start learning as you get the software. The main meat and potatoes of this route schedule are the frequency, who's it signed to, the date, and the customer, and of course, any notes. So I would focus on this when I'm first building the software. I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple more routes. Maybe I need to go monthly to some other locations, and Mark's going to do the monthly stuff. And maybe my first time going to this customer when I get the software is going to be on uh, Wednesday the 22nd. So I just go ahead and select the first time in there. I can give it a stop number if I'd like. I do not need to. And then I'm just going to pick a customer. Do not need to add any route notes. And I'll just go ahead and do one more here. Go ahead and assign a second one on 321. And maybe on 321, I want this to be stop number two. Again, you do not have to use this, but this is important because whatever order of the stops you set here, that's the order that these stops are going to show up on the mobile devices. And again, in the future, I have other videos that will show you how to map and optimize your routes if you're looking for the best set of directions and or driving on your route. The next piece here is just to pick the customer. So I think we're probably getting the idea here. This is basically a glorified spreadsheet. In the end, this is going to have your all of your routes. You may have 100. You may have 1,000. This is a big part of setup. However, once this is built once, you never have to go back through and adjust this. In the future, we will cover in the next video how to post your route schedule forward, how to make sure at the end of the work week that we're set up for the next week without having to go and change these dates manually because it's a ridiculous process. So we want to be able to just move this forward with one click of a button, which we will show you in the next set of videos. So once you've built your route schedule, this is really actually all you have to do to build it. So one of the biggest pieces of the software, it's one of the first things you're going to end up doing. You want to click the close button once you're done. This works as a close and save. And if we go back to our route schedule button, we're going to see that these routes are still here. 
and they're waiting for us to work them. Now there are, there is one other thing I want to cover on this. You're going to notice that we have almost duplicate data. It says, okay, the route driver is Joe, and it's on 321. And then it says, it's assigned to Joe and on 321. What this really, consider this a reassignment area. Instead of assigned to, I like to call it reassigned to. Let's say Joe's out for the day and you need Mark to take over his routes. Well, we could just go here and say, okay, select this for Mark. And Mark's going to do all of the stops on 321 and 322. Maybe Joe's out sick. So our software, in the end, really relies on these dates and this assigned to person. And this is what it's going to look at when it assigns work on the mobile devices. So once we've got our route schedule ready for the week, we're going to go ahead and click close. And now we need to get it to our mobile devices if we use the mobile devices. We're going to hit the sync mobile device button. And in the service program, you will only be using this top drop down. You do not need the legacy mobile devices. There's no need to click it. This is an old feature. It's being removed. And the same with the customer portal. This is all wrapped up in the top now. So just ignore everything from here, from this sync button down. No longer needed. It will be removed from the software at some point in the near future. And if you have a version without it, then that's perfect. That means that we have done our job. Now, you can do a sync all. Sync all is great. It takes forever. It's going to sync your customers, your items, your rentals, all the way down. It's going through each one of these all the way down to here. So you really don't want to do that unless there's a lot of information that's changed. Maybe you've added a lot of tasks and a lot of routes and a lot of rentals or items and customers, then the sync all is a great option. But if you're in this for speed and you need to get stuff done and you need to get those routes out for your techs, from the screen, hit the drop down, select routes, and hit sync. So it'll be a very fast sync and it will push all of the information from this route schedule up to the mobile device screen for your guys to see. And that's all you need to know on building a route schedule. The last thing I would mention is maybe you have a route that you don't want on here anymore. That's not a problem at all. If you want to completely remove it from here, you can click this button to the left. There's a little gray button that turns black. Or you can click and hold it down and drag and multiple. You can now delete multiple things. Just hit delete on the keyboard. It'll basically tell you we're about to delete two records. You can hit yes, and it's removed them. So that's how you remove them from the route schedule. And the last piece I'm going to show you is the suspended. If you check off suspended, let's say Brazil Food Market's a great customer, but they're always late on their payments, and you just don't want to service them until they pay you. Mark them as suspended. The software will not push that route stop up to the mobile device. So you will not work that route. Um, just keep in mind, if you've already pushed your routes up to the mobiles, and then you go to the desktop and you, you check off suspended, you then are going to have to go back, sync mobile devices, select routes, and hit sync. That is the only way to get the mobile set up on the mobile side. You have to do a sync to give it the newest information. That covers your route schedule, and we will have the next video. We'll show you how to post this forward.